to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Good morning and welcome to worship this morning on this first Sunday of Advent. We begin a new church year, some, some different things as we begin and prepare for our celebration of Jesus' birth. Just, uh, just about three weeks away because the fourth Sunday of Advent is also Christmas Eve. So glad you could be here this morning. Um, having braved the, the drizzle or whatever is happening out there. I haven't been outside in a couple hours. Um, as often happens when we come to a new liturgical season, there are a couple of small adjustments in our worship service that I want to uh, remind you of in advance or, or make you aware of in advance, I guess. Um, this morning we will sing our psalm again. Um, we'll sing it in unison. And so as you're able to sing, sing out. If you can only sing the, the one pitch and you don't want to do the, the, the little up and down piece at the end, well, let's sing that piece loud. Um, sing as you're able to. We'll sing the psalm in unison uh, through our Advent season and into Christmas. Um, as we have been doing with the 180 group the last few weeks, we're going to sing our song during communion, and it's a Christmas carol. Although it's a Christmas carol that has good Advent themes in it and, and kind of kind of fits very well for Advent. But it's a Christmas carol, so you get to sing out. So we will sing during communion, but then following communion, um, we'll introduce a new song. And so I want to do a little, little uh, education on that now. If you have a hymnal in front of you, pull out the hymnal and open to page 113. So the front of the hymnal, page 113. This song at the bottom of page 113 is a scripture passage from Luke chapter 2. 33 days after Jesus is born, uh, Jesus and his family, Mary and Joseph, go to the temple uh, to offer a purification sacrifice for Mary. Um, and there they are met by Simeon and Anna. And in the scripture stories, Simeon recites these words as a celebration of Jesus' presence in the temple and Jesus' birth. Um, so that's where these text comes from, is Luke chapter 2. If you're looking along now, I'm going to ask Ellen to play through the tune once, which is what we will sing, but note that the, the bottom line will be the introduction. So no one will actually sing that, but those notes will happen. If you're, if you're familiar with notes, you'll see that happens. And then we'll go to the top. After that, I'll sing it for you. I don't know if you'll appreciate that or not. Uh, but then we'll all sing it together. So if Ellen would, would play through the tune once first. And here's where the singing would begin. Do you want to do the introduction again? Sure. Yeah. Oh, 
So let's try that all together. I know it's a first attempt, but we will all sing together. Introduction again, if you would, please. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your So we also have the lighting of the candles on the Advent wreath. This morning, I think Mila is going to help me light the candle. Just one candle this week. Hold on to that for just a second, and we offer a prayer first. Praise to you, O God, our salvation who is near. You hold us in our waiting and keep us awake to the world. You show up in our lives at unexpected times. Bless us as we light this candle to keep vigil for your arrival. We trust that even though we do not know the day or the hour, you hurry to gather all people into your peace. Amen. Why don't you do this one right up here? There you go. That's it. Might have to blow it out. I think it's too short. Yeah, go ahead. Perfect. Thank you. All right, so the pamphlet will guide you as usual, and we begin with confession and forgiveness. At this point, we've begun with all kinds of things. Please stand as you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God who opens the heavens, who draws near to us with salvation. Amen. God is patient and merciful, desiring all to come to repentance. Trusting this promise of grace, let us confess our sin. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. God clothes you with garments of salvation and covers you with robes of righteousness. In the tender compassion of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. God's covenant is eternal and God's blessing rests upon us all. Amen. We sing together, awake, awake, and greet the new morn. Awake, awake, and greet the newborn. 
shout your joy, for soon he is born. Behold the child of our longing. Come as a baby weak and poor to bring our hearts together. He opens wide the heavenly door and is now inside us The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live, live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the word. Our first reading is from the prophet Isaiah. 
He invites God to come into history, to appear before all the peoples, confident that God's grace comes with him. In our second reading, Paul writes to the church at Corinth. We hear the very introduction to the letter. Um, Paul reminds them of all the spiritual gifts they have received through the coming of Jesus Christ. We hear the word. A reading from Isaiah. The prophet appeals to the Lord. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. And when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From the ages, no, from the ages past, no one has heard. No ear has perceived. No eye has, has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned, because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not, exceedingly, do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's sing the psalm in unison. And I'll ask Ellen to play through the tune once before we begin. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord, God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, the Son of Man you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you, Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians. Paul writes, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Jesus Christ. For in every way you have seen enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of the Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you are called into the fellowship of the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the God. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand as you're able for the gospel acclamation. gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender, it puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. What I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, in terms of, of Boy Scouts, that's what it was called way back. Um, I only got as far as, as uh, not Cub Scout Weeblos, I think was the, the level of scouting that I got to before I, I started doing other things. But I remember, and I looked it up to make sure that I remembered correctly, that the scout motto is be prepared. Be prepared. Um, as a, an important kind of theme, especially in the season of Advent. That's really what Jesus is getting at in this keep awake theme, right? Be prepared, be prepared for the return of the Son of Man, the Son of God. Oh, I thought that was that lighter. Okay, it's like, I hear things falling. I'm not prepared, so be prepared. Um, in the course of my, my quick research on the interwebs, because I don't do a lot on the internet, right? Um, but I did decide, I'm going to look up some of those preparedness things that the U.S. government has, has made for us. So I looked up the FEMA website, you know, because we should prepare for disasters if we know they are coming. We, you know, we hear about hurricanes coming into Florida. We see people, you know, boarding up their houses against the storms that are expected. So FEMA has prepared a 34-page uh, guide to basic preparedness. I, I didn't read it all. Uh, but, but there is something significant about being prepared, right? Being ready. Uh, there are things in life that we can prepare for. If we know the storm is coming, we prepare for the storm. If we, we know have a big expense coming, we begin to save. If we, we have something coming up in the future, we plan for it now. Preparedness is kind of natural, how we live in the world. But we also know that there are many things in life that we can't prepare for, right? When that accident happens, it, it's called an accident because we weren't prepared for it. It's something that you couldn't expect when you get that diagnosis. Who could prepare for that in advance, the diagnosis we might get? 
When death suddenly enters into our lives, in the lives of our family members, how can we be prepared? As I said, this is the theme that Jesus introduces in this reading. And if we were to read this passage that we just heard in context, there would have been almost another whole chapter before this of Jesus talking about his coming, his return. In the Advent season, a word Advent that means coming, we prepare for Jesus' coming in three ways. You hear this every year, but it bears repeating again. We prepare for Jesus coming again in the future, coming again after the resurrection, coming again from heaven to bring about the consummation of all God's promises for those who believe. We, we think about Jesus' coming into our hearts spiritually at this moment, at this day, in the sacrament and in the word. We, we remember that coming of Jesus as well. But we also remember the coming of Jesus in history. Some 2,000 years ago, we decorate the building, we, we add elements that remind us the crash in the back, the trees in the front, that remind us of that historical coming of Jesus. So your church building has been prepared. But today, I invite you to prepare the church, for you are the church. Be prepared. Keep awake. Jesus tells this parable in the midst of this recitation of signs, right? The days will be darkened, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give us light. Signs here. He tells this parable. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and put forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. There are certain things that will precede the things that you could expect. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gates. The things that he's pointing to, the things that Jesus is pointing to, these things taking place, have come in the preceding verses. We get just the ending of it here, the sun being darkened, the moon not giving its light, the stars falling from heaven, the powers in heavens being shaken. Jesus continues, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Now, that's a confusing line for, for many folks. It's like, what does that mean, right? It would seem that Jesus is talking about people who were born contemporaries of him 2,000 years ago, but all of them have, in fact, passed away. There must be some other way to explain this, some other way to understand this that Jesus is teaching. Well, here's a clue to this, this strange line here. By the way, the most important line is the one that comes next. But we're going to spend a little time here with this generation. In the preceding verses, the verses that we didn't read, that end with these signs of the sun being dark and the moon not giving its light. Jesus is talking about unbelievers who are rejecting the coming sun, who are rejecting God's grace. He's talking about those who are desecrating the temple and talking about the, the punishment that's going to come upon the temple itself for those who have turned away from God's will. In verse 26, notice, if you have your text, you can look at it. He says, they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. But in verse 29, he's talking to those who are hearing him right now. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near. Jesus is setting up kind of a they and you difference. And they are those who are the unbelievers, who are rejecting the coming Son, those who are rejecting God's will. And it is that generation that he's talking about, the generation of unbelievers, which has continued for 2,000 years, right? So to paraphrase this line, truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. There will always be unbelievers until the time that Jesus returns. So what that means for us who believe is there are always opportunities to share the gospel, to invite people into relationship with Jesus, our work is not done. Keep that in mind. Because as I said, the most important line in this teaching of Jesus is 
from verse 31. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Gregory the Great, the guy who, to whom uh, Gregorian chant is attributed, uh, an important leader in the church in history, wrote this about this, this one single line. Nothing in this world is more durable than the heavens and the earth. And nothing in the order of nature passes away more quickly than speech. Words, as long as they are incomplete, are not yet words. Once completed, they cease utterly to be. In fact, they cannot be perfected except by their own passing away. Therefore, he says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass. As if he were openly to say, all that seems to you enduring and unchangeable is not enduring and without change in eternity. And everything of mine that seems to pass away is enduring and without change. My speech that seems to pass away utters thoughts which endure forever. Probably around your house you begin, you've begun to prepare for Christmas, right? Much as, as we've done here. You've prepared the external things. But Jesus invites us to prepare our hearts. For his coming today and his coming again in the future. So they, we are not just looking back to some historical event back there. With all the nostalgia that the culture would want to, to bring up in us. And nostalgia is not necessarily a bad thing. But we are invited to look forward. We are invited to look for the fulfillment of God's promises. We are invited to look beyond the nostalgia of something in the past to the glorious fulfillment of all God's promises when the kingdom comes. And so we are invited to prepare our hearts. There's all kinds of ways to talk about that preparation. But let me talk about the most fundamental preparation that we can do to prepare our hearts for the coming of Christ today, the coming of Christ in the future. It's what the church, the people of God, have done for 2,000 years. Even though we've gotten into the 21st century and somehow people who call themselves Christians have figured they could do it a different way. You know, this is the drum I beat very often. It's worship. I know I'm preaching to the choir. But I'm preaching to the choir so that the choir can talk to those who need to hear. This is how we prepare for Christmas. We come to receive the word and receive the sacraments. We come to have Christ's presence made known to us again and again. It's not about the trees. It's not about the Christmas songs. It's about our hearts being ready being ready for Christ's return. As if this is the last day to share that good news, to hear that good news, to live out that good news of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That's what Jesus reminds us this day. He's gone away for a while, but promises to return. Again and again, we remind ourselves in our creeds, He will come again. So keep awake, be prepared. Not just with your emergency kit bought from Amazon for $129.95. Not just with the decorations that will be put away and come out again the next year. But preparing your hearts with faith. Faith based on the word and the sacraments. A faith worked by the Holy Spirit as we gather in worship to proclaim this one crucified and risen for our resurrection. Thanks be to God. Amen.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs.
Gracious Lord, sustain your saints to the end as we enter another church year. Encourage all who hear the preaching of your word that the testimony about Christ may be confirmed among us as we wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give boldness and faithfulness to our bishops, missionaries, and all pastors in Christ. Renew the faith and quicken the love of all Christians, that we may be enriched in all speech and knowledge. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant your blessing to all marriages and keep all husbands and wives faithful to each other. Guide them as they care for the children entrusted to them. Bestow your loving care upon all children who have suffered abuse or neglect, as well as upon all who open their homes to children in foster care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, behold our nation and its leaders and protect our armed forces taking them under your care and blessing. Bring peace to the nations and preserve those in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Visit us in your compassion, O Lord. Deliver the sick from their infirmity, the troubled from their afflictions, the grieving from their sorrow, and the dying from their sin. We pray especially for the family of Maryland, the family of Georgia, the family of Carolyn, Tom, Jim, Olaf, Patricia, Sean, Boyd, Dave, Buck, Bob, Billy, Chris, Susan, Roy, Jennifer, Trudy, Carl, Patty, Terry, Lori, Bill, Penny, Dennis, Blaine, Judy, and those who name now silently or loud. May all who cry to you receive grace according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, entered Jerusalem to shouts and cheers of joy. Grant that we may be stirred by the word and sacraments to rejoice anew now and at his second advent. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, you have made us glad to enter into your presence to hear the good news of our Savior and to receive your gifts. Preserve your church against all her enemies and lead us to walk in your ways and to follow your paths, that when Jesus returns in his glory, we may welcome him with glad hosannas. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a greeting of peace with those with whom you worship today. If you've not already done so, please fill in the welcome pan near the center of the aisle and pass it to those you're seated with. That's our record of attendance and communion for the day. We receive the offering and we sing together, Savior of the Nations, come.
let us pray. Accept, Lord, our offerings, chosen from among your many gifts, and let this present expression of our reverence become for us the pledge of eternal redemption. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and ever-living God. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes again to judge the world in righteousness. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the Word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. With this bread and cup we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we long for your spirit. Come among us, bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us, Awaken your people, fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In this meal, righteousness and peace meet together. Come, take your place at the table. Thanks be to God. Please be seated as we sing together the Lamb of God.
Please stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We sing together. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. world, we may learn from these mysteries to cherish even now the things of heaven and to cling to the treasures that never pass away. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated for brief announcements this morning. Again, I'm glad that you could worship with me on this first Sunday in Advent. All kinds of Advent things going on. Do you want to lead the way? Yes. All right. Um, I just want to say thank you. I'm not going to mention names because I'll miss somebody, but thank you for everybody that helped. Uh, hanging of the greens to get us ready for the Advent season um, and especially the Boy Scout though our Boy Scout troop here that yes. we help Boy. sponsor just there scout about, troop how scout many troop. We have there here? are mostly girls here yeah well there were boys here yes there were girls yeah. boys yeah there must have been 10 or 15 yeah, I think so. kids and it was just they wild. kept showing up <laughs> and you know in a couple hours everything was done and, and it was a lot of fun so uh, Thank you for that and, and everybody that did help. And then make sure you join us downstairs for treats today because that's in honor of Mila's birthday. So we want to make sure she's we already know. downstairs. We'll, yes, we'll sing good. to her down there. Yes, so. we can do that. Thank you. So in the yellow pages, also note we will we will anticipate de decorating on January seventh. So if you kind of keep that in the back of your mind, lots of hands make it go really quickly. Um, it'll be. Uh, one day after the epiphany of our Lord. So we'll get an extra day of Christmas. And just along with the theme of the decorating, there are still a couple wreaths that can be sponsored. The forms are 
um, back there with the envelopes and you can make checks out to St. John Lutheran because we already paid for them. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so all these have been purchased, but we're waiting for reimbursement in a sense. We're asking you for that reimbursement. Good morning. Um, I'm also with the decorations and stuff. We've got the giving tree in the back. Yep. We've got envelopes on there. If you look closely, there are two different types of envelopes. One is for um, national, um, uh, national giving, and that would be the Lutheran World Relief. It has on there how much you want given by an honor or memory of someone, so you, their name can be put into the bulletin um, come Christmas time as to um, you gave money in their honor or their memory. Um, if you're going to write a check out, please write out to St. John Lutheran Church and just write in the memo um, which uh, organization you're giving it to. The other envelope, it's got lots of choices, lots of choices. Um, it has Echo, 1649, Gifts, Men, Shelter, and Other. Now the other, it's a local area, let's say Salvation Army or YWCA, you want to give to them because it's not on your list. We, have, we put a grant request out to the foundation and they gladly accepted our grant request with a matching funds on that. So if you would write to the YWCA for $50, let's say, and they will turn around and match that $50 um, as well. So. If you have a special organization you want to give to that's not on our list, you're welcome to put that in there in their place. So thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before Ted gets up there, I'll point to the Christmas worship services on, in the yellow page there. Christmas Eve falls on a Sunday. So at 9 o'clock on Sunday, December 24th, we will do the fourth Sunday of Advent. There'll be no, there'll be no birth story. So those who were like, I'll come at 9 on Sunday, then I won't come back. You're not going to hear about Jesus is getting born. No, you're not until you come back at 4 or 7 on, on January or December 24th. So 4 or 7 for Christmas Eve services. That's my encouragement. I don't know. Was that encouraging? Not so sure. no baby Jesus in there yet. I know. That's right. I just want to say thank you for all those who helped. Dale, thank you on video today. Um, Paul and Jody, thank you for all your help. I think they're actually uh, doing some cleanup as we speak. So the, the sign-up sheets are up back there. We need people to read every week and do video every week and help usher. And you don't have to do it every week. But if you feel the need for uh, every once in a while, we gladly take the help. So, And I want to say, Alan, thank you for playing piano today. <laughs> I love it. That was awesome. So thank you so much. Thank you. So take a look at the yellow page, note the things that apply to you. The executive committee, since three quarters of our executive committee are within, no, they're not within earshot anymore. Half of our committee. Anyway, we'll, we're going to do that online. We're going to do that through the email for executive committee. Email through the executive committee. There's the other one I was looking for. So, um, join us for fellowship. That's what, I knew there was something else I wanted to say. Join us for fellowship. But before that, please stand. We sing selected verses from O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Okay. 
Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.